Tesla has just said it will hit a new run rate at Gigafactory Berlin in Germany by the first quarter of 2023. The numbers we're looking at are a huge increase over what the factory are producing now. If they can in fact hit that run rate, which they say that they will, we're going to see an enormous number of deliveries come from Tesla's factory in Germany next year. It's going to make a huge change to Tesla's 2023 production by the end of the year. friends welcome to the channel i'm the electric viking great to see you welcome to the new subscribers welcome back everyone else i'm waiting for my electric car there's been a delay here thanks to the subsidy hold up i should have it soon though once i do receive it and i've already signed the contracts by the way i'll let you guys all know the details and give you a video and everything i know about it and I'll give you my impressions as well however now we're talking about tesla's production at Gigafactory Berlin. Tesla says it's going to hit a production run rate of 5,000 per week in the first quarter of 2023. 5,000 per week, that would put Tesla on track to, de to deliver 260,000 vehicles in Germany, well, from their factory in Germany next year. But realistically, obviously, Tesla doesn't want to hit 260,000. They say they can hit more than 500,000 in total production capacity from that factory. Their plan would be to ramp from 5,000 per week in the first quarter to 10,000 per week by the end of the year. Meaning production capacity from that factory in 2024 would hit 520,000. And I'm going to guess they're going to hit around 300,000 next year in 2023. What does this mean? Well, it means that if you're one of the competition, Volkswagen, yeah, you've got to be, you've got to be a little bit concerned that your biggest competition, right, who are not only producing vehicles in your backyard, literally in, you know, in your own country, but also producing them in China at a much lower cost than you can, is shipping them from China to your country and building them in your country as well. So where do we get this information from? Well, Tesla held an open door event in Grunheide on the 11th of September, where they announced these numbers. At Sunday's event, the company talked to local employees about Giga Berlin's water usage and the factory's environmental and water protection protocols. It also provided information on the factory's road and rail infrastructure. It has its own railway line that it built specifically for the factory, forest conservation, battery cell production, and training and studying at Giga Factory Berlin. Tesla shared that Giga Berlin's production ramp is going very well not a lot of detail there, but you know, very well sounds good. In June, Tesla announced that Giga Berlin produced 1,000 vehicles per week. Obviously, a big difference to the 5,000 they're going for in the first quarter of next year. However, according to the German press agency, Tesla Giga Berlin will reach 5,000 by the beginning of next year. So it's possible that by the end of the first quarter of 2023, that ramp could be more than 5,000 per week. Now, as many of you know, one of the sticking points or one of the key reasons that Tesla's enemies tried to attack it, it used water consumption. And I obviously pointed out that there's a mine not far down the road from Tesla's Gigafactory in Berlin, which uses 141 times more water, 141 times more water than Tesla's Gigafactory, which makes it sort of ridiculous. But anyhow, what about water consumption? How much are they actually using? Well, Tesla wants to reduce Giga Berlin's water consumption further than what they already have. They're focused on reducing fresh water consumption. And currently, Giga Berlin consumes about 2.2 cubic meters, which is 264 gallons of fresh water per car. So that's about 1,000 liters of water per car manufactured. Its water consumption accounts for Tesla's planned in-house battery production line in Germany, meaning Tesla's looking at how they can reduce consumption on each production line in order to maybe take that figure of 1,000 liters of water per vehicle down to maybe 500. However, here's the interesting thing about all of this, right? If you think about it, if Tesla production actually replaced other vehicle production, it would be a good thing for water consumption. In fact, Tesla cars use only a quarter of the industry average of water per car. Tesla stated that the auto industry's average fresh water consumption is about four cubic meters, which is 1,056 gallons or 4,000 liters 
per vehicle. As per ACEA water consumption in Europe, car production has decreased by 30.5% since 2006, car water consumption per car that is. However, as of July 2022, automakers use 3.76 cubic meters or 993 gallons of water per vehicle. So what does that mean? Well, right now, today, Tesla is using, on average, still about only a quarter of the industry average in Europe of water per car, right? To produce each car, Tesla, 1,000 liters. Competition, nearly 4,000. So really, all this stuff about Tesla's water consumption being excessive, being over the top, the truth was that the opposite was in fact the case. Now, Tesla is trying to retain employees. It's pretty hard in the automotive industry right now in certain sectors where employees are in huge demand. Yes, of course, internal combustion engine employees, not a lot of demand for those right now, even though there's still a lot of people coming out of university thinking there will be, which is a bit astounding to me. Some of you guys have sent me emails showing me that a lot of engineers being trained right now in the US are being trained to work on internal combustion engine vehicles. That is very concerning. So Tesla is trying to address this whole idea of keeping employees, not, not, not having a high turnover rate. One of the ways they're doing that is by assessing commuting to work, getting to work. If it takes you a long time to get to work, you're less likely to stay. That's the truth. At the beginning of the year, Tesla shared plans that would run a shuttle train between Erkner and a new stop south of Giga Berlin's grounds for workers to try and make it easier for them to get to work. During Tesla's GigaFest, Elon Musk talked a bit about the train station that they'd be building. He said, it's just a 30 minute train ride to Berlin. We're actually going to be building a train station where you can literally just ironically for a car company, you know, you could just take the train. You can also take your car. That's fine too. At Sunday's open door event, Tesla announced that the train station to Giga Berlin could open in spring of 2023. I'm kind of curious as to what they're going to call the stop. Will it be um, Tesla stop or will it be something else? Anyway, I think this is pretty cool news. If your factory or the company that you work for built a train line just to your business, you'd have to say that that goes some way towards you having a higher job satisfaction, at least thinking, you know what? This company does care about worker satisfaction or about, you know, it not taking me an hour or two to get to work every day. And surely it's a lot less stress, a lot easier to just take the train to work than what it would be to drive in peak hour traffic, which sucks. I mean, as many of you know, getting to work, a lot of people here in Australia spend, you know, an hour and a half, one way. So three hours a day of driving, it's just a nightmare, waste of time. When instead of doing that, they can be working more hours in Tesla's factories, producing more cars. No, just joking. But seriously, Tesla's production numbers look promising. If they can hit this 5,000 per week in the first quarter of next year, they would be on track then to probably get to a production run rate of 10,000 vehicles per week by the end of 2023, 520,000 cars per year. By the end of 2023, we could be looking at close to 2 million production run rate at Shanghai, 700,000 at Fremont, and Texas, 520,000 as well there. So that's a total of nearly 4 million cars by the end of 2023. Now that's being optimistic, sure, but it is actually possible that they could hit those numbers. Let me know what you think Tesla will achieve by the end of 2023 in the comment section below. And as always, thank you for watching. Have a great day. Bye-bye.